So, Vincent, congratulations on your award by the Football Writers Association. When we were considering who would be this year's recipient, you were an overwhelming choice, not least because of what you've done in football, but, of course, what you've done in terms of media relations. You've always been good with the media and, and your great charity work as well in Manchester. Do you feel you've always had a good relationship with the media? I, f I think I have a stable relationship with the media. So I've never really taken offence to, you know, I understand that uh, I distance myself from hype and drama. So it's made my relationship healthy. And I think when you get to know me over years, you know what I do and what I don't. Um, what I do is if I have to be available, I'm available. And instead of doing 15 minutes, I'll do half an hour, maybe an hour if, if you know, if to, to, to people I've known for maybe a bit longer. Uh, what I don't do is, you know, get out of my way to try and people please and, you know, make everybody happy. You know, I, I just try and stick to something that people can relate to. And in the end, I just try and treat everyone with respect. And I feel I've always been treated with respect because of it. And when you look through the list of winners of this award in the past, it's, it's some of the great names in, in British football. How does that make you feel? It's, it's difficult for me to, to grasp, you know, because it's, the, these names are people I looked up to when I was a kid. I, I never even saw myself being mentioned in the same breath. I was just, you know, okay, this is a role model. I'm just going to do my own thing. Um, and, and, you know, just uh, some of these people you, you adore as a kid. So to be amongst these names, it's something very special, something unique. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's when I see my dad's reaction that I really, that makes me proud. Yeah. And, and when you arrived at Manchester City, did you have any idea what was to follow? Because it's a very different club now to what it was then. <laughs> no way, it's impossible. I mean, I signed at City and my first press conference was... Uh, at the local rugby, rugby club's pub because they had a bit more space for the press conference and um, I was trying to put the boxing gloves on to do a bit of a cardio session and we only had one glove. I'm not saying it was that, you know, they were paying good wages and stuff but in terms of everything around, surrounding the club, trying to, you know, the standards, uh, we've come a long way with, with, with very similar people that just raised the standards. Um, but you couldn't have imagined it at the start. And of course, this year, Liverpool seem to be running away with it, but City aren't going to let it go, are they? 6-1 win winners tonight, another Sergio Aguero hat-trick. He's, he's breaking records as well. Can City still really push Liverpool all the way? Well, with this big of a gap, um, I mean, I'm not breaking news by saying that it's obviously in Liverpool's hands, um, but if, if the last decade has taught us anything, is that we... Um, find our best moments and we'll see whether it lasts or not but we'll find out we find our best moments exactly at these these breaking points you know and this season has so much still to be done I mean okay winning the league is a big big thing it's unbelievable it's such a hard achievement 30 years for Liverpool but still in the Champions League still in the FA Cup still in the Carling, uh, Carabao Cup um, I wouldn't look at this as a season of anything else than opportunity still. And of course, we were in a football writers' dinner a few weeks ago in Manchester when Pep and, and uh, Jürgen were looking at each other's trophies with envy. And uh, maybe, maybe for Pep, the, the, the Champions League is perhaps something he really wants to win with City. Is that, is that how you see it? Yeah, it's, it's not just Pep, it's the whole club. The, it, it's it's part of the evolution as well of City. I mean, when I was in at City, I can comfortably say for the first eight eight years, it wasn't really as big as a priority as it was for other clubs in Europe. We wanted to win the Premier League. We wanted to win it again. We wanted to win the FA Cup, and and I can't quite explain it. It was just that English Manchester kind of thing. We wanna we wanna beat United or we wanna beat Liverpool, and in recent years, though, it's it's changed. I think now the club is desperately hungry for the Champions League. And if I've learned anything about cities, uh, whenever they set themselves a target, um, they are capable of, of achieving it. So you think this year it's possible? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet a pound against it. <laughs>
And finally, your legacy in Manchester, not only on the football side, but obviously with your ch homeless charity for, for with Andy Burnham as well, who's yeah, here tonight. Yeah. How important is that to you as a person and as well as representing Manchester City? Well, um, what we try to achieve, you know, trying to fight homelessness in Manchester and, and, and actually making significant progress, there's always still a long path or journey to follow, but um, it wasn't just myself or it wasn't just uh, the mayor, Andy Burnham, it was also, you know, my wife, Carla, and a, a whole bunch of people being involved in trying to to do some good but um, I wanted to do this not just for Manchester but also for my kids who are born in Manchester born and bred in Manchester and and I don't think it was I didn't feel like I could leave that place that had given me so much without uh, doing everything I could to to contribute and I'm going to keep doing so and, and just one moment, if you could relive that moment from your career, would it be the goal against Leicester? Would it be the first trophy lift? What the Aguero mm. moment? What would be the one that you could run over time and time again? Difficult. None of the trophy lists. It, it's definitely uh, moments on the pitch, sharing experiences with teammates. The the Aguero moment, like it's it sits pretty high, but. I have a, a little bit of a mixed feeling between the United goal that I scored in the first season we won the league or the Leicester goal in the last season we, I won the league for the simple reason that before that game against Leicester I had all this influx of information. I knew I was going, I knew it was my last game at the Etihad, I knew everything I was doing was the last time in that stadium and then guess what, clean sheet, you score that goal and you go on to win the league so that's pretty big but um, I go for Aguero which is not one of my moments <laughs> but... Great for the club. I, I don't think anything would have been the same if he didn't do that.